Hello, and welcome to the Premier Pro Virtual Summit. Thanks for joining me. We're going to be exploring how to create accessible video using Adobe Premiere Pro. And this is a topic that I think is very important. In this session, you're going to learn how to make content that you create with Premiere Pro more broadly accessible. We're going to do this by using both open and closed caption content. And it means that it's more discoverable and that more people can take it in. Closed captions are generally useful, not just for those who are deaf or hard of hearing, but can also be useful for folks who are new to a language or listening to an, in a noisy environment. Open captions are always in view and are widely used in social media these days where videos are often initially played back in a muted state in a timeline. In the session, you're gonna learn a lot of different things, how to automatically and accurately generate a transcript from a, from a pro sequence, how to then auto-generate captions from that transcript, how to format these captions so they're ready to use, how to create open captions that are always visible, and then what formats you need when you wanna to upload to another website. My name's Rich Harrington and I'm a visual storyteller, and I'm very interested in the fusion of photography and video. I've also been helping people for many years by empowering them with AI as I've gotten a chance to work on many different software apps. And I'm a husband and a father, and it was actually my wife who first exposed me to the deaf community. She has been an ASL educator, and I've learned a little bit about American Sign Language through the years and have met many in that community. When I get a chance, I like to capture my knowledge and share it via books. I've also published more than 200 full-length classes, and I am the founder of Red Pixel and the publisher of Photofocus. So I really enjoy being a content creator. And as I've created content through the years, I've put it out there to help people. My mom was a teacher. My dad was a NASA engineer. So I was blessed with the ability to understand very technical things, but also to teach very technical things. And so I've had a chance and perhaps I'm on your bookshelf. And these are some of the projects that I've worked on for a wide range of both high tech companies and nonprofits and some government agencies. And every once in a while, I get brought into television stations to help them with their workflow. Okay, thanks for checking this out. And I encourage you to feel free to get in touch, but why don't we go ahead and jump right into actually going through accessible video. And let's start with why accessible video actually matters. According to the recent census, almost 19% of Americans can be classified as having something that gets in their way of being able to be successful. This can include hearing parents from birth or by accident or via old age. There's many reasons that can cause hearing loss or can impede hearing. But it's incredibly important to have access to content, especially in this day of the internet, because it affects people's quality of life. For many, internet accessibility is really critical to their job. Many of your customers or people in your audience could be blind or visually impaired, deaf or hard of hearing. Perhaps there's a cognitive impairment from an injury or birth. There could be physical challenges, dexterity, or perhaps they are just new to the country and are a second language speaker, or they grew up in an area where they learned one language rather than the language that you produce in. And of course, there's things like airports and train stations where there's just a lot of noise that gets in the way of consuming content. Now, there are many different reasons for hearing impairment. What it generally means is that there is a partial or a total inability to hear sound. So someone who is generally referred to as deaf is someone who has little or no hearing. However, hard of hearing is also prevalent and hearing loss can be temporary due to a medical condition or injury or permanent. Some of the things that can cause hearing loss include genetics, aging, exposure to noise, certain infections, complications during birth, physical trauma, or certain medications or toxins. It's estimated that there's about 1.1 billion people who've been affected by hearing loss, and it can cause a challenge for these folks anywhere from small disability to a major disability. Those who use sign language and members of deaf culture often see themselves as having a difference though, rather than a disability. So be careful with the language that you use. 
I was citing government language, but there's a whole different culture here and different belief system. So when you're producing content, just remember the goal here is to make it more accessible, not just accessible to one community. Generally speaking, the term hearing impairment is viewed negatively. All right, with these factors in mind, why don't we move on and talk about how to generate a transcript from a Premiere Pro sequence. This is one of the first things you'll need to do if you want to make an actual caption. Okay, here's how. Let's switch over to Premiere and go to a sequence. I'll just duplicate this one here that already has captions. Open it up and I'm going to remove the captions so we start fresh. Now I'm currently working in the captioning workspace. You'll find it under Window, Workspaces, Captions and Graphics. In this case, with the sequence open, we need to create a transcript. And there's a few ways of doing this. You'll notice here that I have the transcript open in the panel. I'm going to select the sequence here and come up to the menu and choose sequence. And down here, you see the ability to transcribe. Now, if this is the first time you've done this, it'll just say transcribe sequence. If you want to run it again, you could choose retranscribe sequence. It'll bring up a dialog where you have to make a few choices. First up, choose the language that you intend. Depending upon your system, you may need to download the models here for different languages. I'll select English, and now I have to decide if I want to label the speakers. This is so that it clearly identifies who's talking. Now, you might have to go through and edit the names, but this will actually try to break things up depending upon who is talking in the piece. This is ultimately up to you, but I'll go ahead and select yes, separate speakers. And you can decide what to actually go ahead and transcribe. If you are using the essential sound panel to mix your audio, then you can limit it to just the dialogue tracks. And it will actually not try to read the music tracks or the sound effects, which makes it a more accurate transcription because it's cleaner. There's just the vocal most likely. In this case, I'm gonna work with a finished sequence or a mix down. So I'm just gonna choose to take the audio track from A1 in this case. Now I'll click transcribe. This is a relatively short sequence and a decently fast computer, so it transcribes very quickly. Longer form content may take longer. You'll see that a transcript is generated. You can go in and edit the names. So for example, I'll identify speaker one as the narrator. Let's click save and you see that it updates. I can click on it and it cues me right there. It's your car, you take it to people you trust. Okay, so far so good. Now, as we continue to click on each thing, it cues up. In this case, this is the mechanic. We'll save. It's your finances. Still the narrator. And now we have a man and TV commercial. So I'll save. So here it's different voices. So we need to split that. I'll split the segment here and right here as well. Let's add another speaker.
and a fifth one. This is a credit counselor. There we go. I'll click save and we can assign these. There we go. Perfect. So now let's have a look and a listen. It's your car. You take it to people you trust. Boy, the total rebuild, uh, you were wanting to rip out your linkage. Well, that's just an estimate, little lady. It's your finances. You want to go to the experts. Cut your payments by 50. We've got all these credit card bills. We've got to find a way to get out from under this debt. We can help. Credit.org is a nonprofit organization that has been helping people for 60 years. Visit www.credit.org. We're really close. This is easy to fix. So let's just review each line. It's your car. You take it to people you trust. That's accurate. Oh, boy, the total rebuild, uh, you were wanting to rip out your linkage. Well, that's just an estimate, little lady. So this one's a little tough. Thick accent. Not all on mic, but we can fix this. If you want to avoid a total rebuild, there we go. This one's close. And we'll just continue to modify that text. Now I could tab to the next key. This is probably the toughest one. He's just making up words, to be perfectly honest. This is a TV commercial I directed, and that was just gibberish. He was trying to be dismissive and convince her to pay extra money. Oh, a total rebuild. Uh, you were wanting to rip out your linkage. Well, that's just an estimate, little lady. It's your finances. You want to go to the experts. Cut your payments by 50. We've got all these credit card bills. We've got to find a way to get out from under this debt. We can help. Credit.org is... So this is close. Credit.org is a nonprofit organization. .org is a nonprofit organization that has been helping people for 60 years. Visit www.credit.org. There we go. We'll put hyphens here. There we go. Good. So now we have a clean transcript. Just took minor edits. It really was a giant time saver. Premiere's ability to scan and analyze a sequence is really quite good, and it just keeps getting better with each update. Now that we've got a transcript, it's time to generate actual captions. Now the difference here is that transcripts are just a simple taking the text or the spoken word and turning it into written word. However, with captions, that text is specifically lined up with where it happens within the dialogue, and it generally is visible, whether it's through open or closed captions, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Back here in Premiere, I've got my sequence here with the actual transcript. And what I wanna do now is turn that into captions. So if I take a look here and I click on the captions page, you see right now it's blank, but we've got our transcript. So what we're gonna do is convert it. So if I come over here to the create captions button, I can click. Now it asks me what I wanna create. And there's multiple formats. You'll see here a wide range of different broadcast standards if that's what you're trying to go for or the ability to go in a little bit more. And here you can see the expanded options. For example, I can go with the traditional broadcast one, limit it to one line or two, adjust some of the durations or apply a visual style. When you're set, you can click create captions and it will analyze and build them for you. Let's have a look. It's your car. You take it to people you trust. Oh, boy, the total rebuild. Uh, you were wanting to rip out your linkage. Well, that's just an estimate, little lady. 
It's your finances. You want to go to the experts. Cut your payments by 50. We've got all these credit card bills. We've got to find a way to get out from under this debt. We can help. Credit.org is a nonprofit organization that has been helping people for 60 years. Visit www.credit.org. All right. Well, it's coming along nicely. We've got our captions. We just need to do some formatting to improve their legibility and sometimes maybe position them on the screen so they're not overlapping with graphics. This is where formatting comes in and we can format them for use on the web or broadcast if they are closed captions. Closed captions are generally on-screen text descriptions. They're used to display dialogue, identify who's speaking, and perhaps describe relevant sounds. Captions are generally synchronized with the video. And if you are delivering via the web, you can have both closed captions, which is the more standard one for broadcast, or open captions, which is more common on the web. However, both are supported. Closed captions are those that can be turned on or off by the viewer, on demand effectively. For videos on televisions, this is generally done with a decoder. However, all the decoders have been built into televisions for many years. There are a lot of different caption formats out there, and it just really depends on the market that you're in. Some of these are more aimed at traditional broadcast. Some of them are more broadly accessible. There's just lots of choices. And Premiere has the ability to work with many of these. Let's go ahead and make some format choices. In the captions panel here, I see my individual captions and the format that I picked. There's also a spell check if you need, just to look things over. You can change the language as well. Let's click on each one. In this case, I'm just gonna select all of them and make this a touch more accessible. Over here with it selected, I can see a little bit of what's happening. For example, where is it positioned? Is it in the center, dead middle, right along the bottom? And then you can shift those one way or the other if needed. So I can bring them a little bit up, for example, from the bottom edge. Also, you can choose which font you use. Now, not all decoders will allow you to actually use these fonts. Most won't, in fact but this will come in handy as we are making things for open captions later. I'll just go with something that's very readable and I can open up the text panel if needed. Looks good. And I think we're ready to go forward. Let's have a look. It's your car. You take it to people you trust. Now this one's looking close, but I don't like the word wrap here. So let's modify this one. So there's some ellipses to carry it over. And then we can return that there. And we're gonna have to wrap this to two lines. There we go. It's your finances. You want to go to the experts. Cut your payments by 50. We've got all these credit card bills. We've got to find. So far, this is going really well. I can look at here and see the actual duration. So if I cut in and zoom a little bit here, you can better see. It's your car. You take it to people you trust. That's good, although this one's a little late. So I'll just adjust the trim here and bring it in sooner. That's good, but it comes out a little sooner. It's your finances. You want to go to the experts. Cut your payments by 50. We've got all, all these credit cards. Now here we're having a problem. In this case, it's pretty standard, like most TV commercials that have call to actions, where there's a URL or a phone number, 
and it's colliding here with the captions. So we need to move the captions. So I'll select it and just take a look here at the position. We'll place it above. Let's go negative 120 and remember that value. Here it is again. Let's see if both lines fit. That's good. And so it's pretty easy to reassociate the position of those. Now in this case, I think this is a little bit strange. We can help. Let's move this text over. And just connect it here. And we may have to trim a little. We can help. Credit.org is a nonprofit organization that. There we go. And that's a good place to transition. Let's use the trim tools here. There we go. And have a listen. We can help. Credit.org is a nonprofit organization that has been helping people for 60 years. Visit www. Now this one's tough. And we probably need to change the color and try moving that in. It's a very full graphic. Visit www. So in this case, let's put a background behind it a bit. People for 60 years. Visit www.credit.org. That's looking pretty good. And in this case, I could just take that to the actual URL since people are more than familiar with how to read a URL. There we go. Good. All right, let's take a look from the top. I'll press the home key with the sequence active. It's your car. You take it to people you trust. Oh, what a total rebuild. Uh, you were wanting to rip out your linkage. Well, that's just an estimate, little lady. It's your finances. You want to go to the experts. Cut your payments by 50. We've got all these credit card bills. We've got to find a way to get out from under this debt. We can help. Credit.org is a nonprofit organization that has been helping people for 60 years. Visit www.credit.org. That's good. Now, sometimes you have closed captions, like we just made there. They're going to pop up when we click a button or playing back within a window and we choose to initiate them. But you might also want to create open captions that are burned in and can't be turned off. These are always visible. Generally speaking, they'll be viewable inside the media player. Now, in order to make something 508 compliant, which is a government term in the United States, then the user has to be able to either turn them on or off, or they must always be burned in, hence open captions. Some people will make both files available for download just to address the broadest audience. As you see here, this is a podcast produced by the United States federal government. And you can see that some of these actually do have captions. The Park Service tries very hard to be making things accessible to the broadest audience. So they indicate when things have captions. Did you know that for the last 303 yards from the Rim Road to this overlook, you have been walking on Vernal Mesa Quartz Monzonite? This rock unit is composed of some of the most common minerals known on Earth, including feldspars and quartz. Feldspars are the most widespread mineral group because they can occur in all types of rocks and constitute 60% of the Earth's crust. The one on the right clearly has open captions that are visible. Now, which one should you choose? Benefit of open captions, they're always in view and they can't be turned off. Open captions can be part of the video stream because they're actually burned in. However, it's important to keep in mind that open captions are part of the video stream, which means they can lose quality, unlike closed captions that are dynamically generated. Closed captions will add a separate stream of text to the file. It's generally another file and then your file calls it up or plays it back on top of it. 
Closed captions generally will only appear if a media player supports them, and not all do, but more and more are starting to do so. Additionally, you can improve the discoverability of your video online by uploading caption files. It effectively lets it index the entire video for many players and sites. Let's do a little bit more formatting to clean these up. First up, right now I see that I'm using a broadcast closed caption format. I can select those and take a look over here for changes. I think for readability, I'm going to want to modify this a little bit. And I'm going to add a bit of a background there. Let's go translucent. You see, we can put some area behind it to make it a bit more readable. There we go. That helps with readability. Good. Now what I'd like to do is duplicate this track. So I see that I currently have one set. Let's right click on that. And we will add another track below. And this time, set it to the subtitle option and click OK. Now I can select all of these and just alter option drag. Snap them into place. Looks like we're just a little off, so I'll drag that down. Let's just lasso those. And nudge them into place. Good. And here, these are set to the subtitle format. Notice that this turns it off, and we have two sets of different styles here. This gives me the ability to modify this one. Subtitles give you more choices. Here I can actually adjust the visual appearance, such as the font size, and add or remove the background color. We can also explore options here, such as the drop shadow. Yeah. We're just checking for readability. We're making them larger so that they're more readable on the web. Now, you can make any small edits here for refinement. As well as insert line breaks as needed. There we go. And if needed, you could flip between them like such, keeping any edits in sync that you make or having them be independent. For example, the subtitle track could be used for a translation. Let's make this one a little easier to read. We'll put a background on that one and just expand it a bit, like such. There we go. It's good styling. Good. Now let's talk about getting them out. It's possible to embed the captions or the actual burn-in captions here for open, depending upon your choices. Ultimately, we have to get them out for the web. In Premiere, Choose which one's visible. For example, I have subtitle visible here. So when I choose File, Export, Media, I can then tell it where I want it to go. I'm going to make a new folder here called To Post. And let's just label this the spot. And we'll do OC for open captions. 
Now, if you look at this, you can see what happens. We have to decide what to include. So I want to, in this case, burn them into the video and you see it becomes visible. There's no file format here or any other change, just enabling them with the on off switch and choosing the burn into video option for the open captions. That's good, I'll click export and it quickly generates that spot. Now let's export a second time. I'm gonna to switch to view the 708 captions. One thing to note is that you're just viewing them here. You decide in the export dialog what's included, but it is easier if you just look at what you're actually working with. I'll choose file, export media. You see it visually updates. So here I could have used that style this is just the traditional captions turned into a burned in caption. The benefit of the subtitle format is that you had all of the text controls for formatting the visual appearance. In this case, I'll create a sidecar file. That's because there is no such thing as embedded in the MPEG-4 format. If you wanted to do embedded, then you would look at things like the MXF, for example, and you see it's an option for actual embedding embed into output file. But we're going with something for the web here. There we go. I'll enable that and choose create sidecar file. Now you need to specify a file format and there's a lot of them out there. Remember, we discussed that there's many different choices. Premiere is supporting three of these on export. The one that's most commonly broadly supported if you need to use it again is this SRT format. Look it over, give it a descriptive name. I'll do CC for closed captions and click export. And it generates the file as well. And it generates the file. Let's switch here to a web browser. There we go. And I'll visit a standard site such as YouTube. And I'm gonna upload the video. I'll now click on the add video button here and choose upload and select the file I want to upload. When you go to post, just choose the closed caption one there. There we go. And I can choose to edit the draft. Notice here, the SRT file failed to upload. You don't actually upload it in the video window. I did that so you can see the error message. What you can do now is go in and start to edit this. Now, I'm not gonna go through all the extra details here, but you would normally write a title, a description, pick a thumbnail, etc., and click next. And then come down here and also set a language and a caption certification. In this case, the content has aired with captions. I'll also say that there's no caption certification here, so it doesn't try to skip that step. Good, I'll click next. Now we can add subtitles. It'll give us the option to actually upload a file. So I'll just choose upload. And this one is gonna include timing. If we look at the SRT file, what you'll discover is that it actually has details about when the words happen. Let's go ahead and bring that in. We'll use the with timing option and select, and there it is. Look at how it actually recreates things. It's your car. You take it to people you trust. You want to rip out your linkage. That's just an estimate, little lady. It's your finances. You want to go to the experts. Cut your payments by 50. We've got all these credit card bills. We've got to find a way to get out from under this debt. We can help. Credit.org is a nonprofit organization that has been helping people for 60 years. Visit www.credit.org. Very cool. And I can extend that last credit there. It's a visual editor. There we go, and it updates. That's really quite useful. 
And this interface is very similar to Premiere. If you want to just see the text itself, you can click the edit as text and just see it from top to bottom. I'll add some ellipses there to indicate that this is a break with a continuation on the next line. There we go. And it's great that you actually have the flexibility here to make changes. There we are. And let's just indicate the mechanics voice. Good. And the last one here. It's your car. You take it to people. You want a total rebuild. Uh, you want to rip out your leg. Your well, that's just an estimate, little lady. It's your finances. Looking good. There we are. And you see it updates. All right. When we're all set, you can either save a draft if you want to keep editing or click done, indicating that it's ready for use. Now, click on through. It'll check. And you can decide what you do with it. I'm going to leave this as private for now. But it is uploaded to my account with the captions ready to go. So why do we do this? Well, remember, lots of people benefit from captions. When we upload to the social media site, don't forget to include that content. You spent more time creating the video, so you want to actually increase the value. People will spend an additional two minutes on a website that hosts video. And videos with captions are going to double the number of people who actually watch the content, as well as the search engine ranking. There's a wide range of formats, but the one you learned most about today is SRT. This is going to be the most common. But what are some additional benefits? Of course, it's going to be those who have challenges with hearing the content. That could be folks like those who are considered deaf or hard of hearing. But it also means travelers, people on trains and airplanes in noisy environments, people who speak another language as their primary language. They'll be able to use the visible text to help them with context or to better learn what's being said, especially if you have speakers who aren't as clear. Students find this useful. Those who might have difficulty with processing audio or folks who are watching this on social media or within an office environment where the sound might be off. There's lots of benefits here. Additionally, the videos are far more indexable, meaning it's easier for the search engines and recommendation engines to find them. You put a lot of money into making videos, so you might as well have it ranked higher. What happens here is when there is video on a website, people spend more time there. Videos with captions double the number of people who will finish watching a video. And the search ranking is significantly higher because it indexes not just the description or the title, but all the words that were said in the video. And you want that content to be higher ranked and easier to find. If you'd like to learn more about captioning, as well as some of the government regulations, here are a few links that you might want to explore. All right, I appreciate you coming out. I hope you're enjoying the premiere conference we have going on here. Thanks again for checking out the virtual summit events. If you'd like to personally get in touch, you can feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn. This is an area that I'm very passionate on. So if your organization needs some consulting help, I'm happy to help. And if you'd like some other ways of getting in touch, here are some of my more common social networks. Be sure though to explore the resources. I regularly publish over at PhotoFocus. This is a great website filled with education about photography and video. And I'll be live at NAB Show in Las Vegas coming up soon. So if you've ever thought about going to NAB Show, you might wanna check this out. Here's a chance to save on NAB Show as well as learn some more information about the event. All right, thanks again. My name's Rich Harrington, and I hope you're enjoying the Premier Pro Virtual Summit.